be among these people of ancient America recorded in the Book of Mormon. Call this toll-free number now. You're watching KOLN Lincoln and KGIN Grand Island. From the Bob Devaney Sports Center, KOLN Lincoln and KGIN Grand Island present the 1996 Boys State Basketball Finals. Brought to you by NC Plus, America's down-to-earth seed company. Your local Ford dealer. Big A Auto Parts, America's parts pros. And Lincoln Telephone. Very good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Devaney Center Class C1's championship up for grabs tonight between the Wahoo Warriors and the defending state champion St. Paul Wildcats. We're about 10 minutes away from game time, and that'll give us time to let you know where these teams are coming from. Let's check out first the St. Paul Wildcats. They are located in the nice central part of Nebraska. They are blue and gold the average enrollment is 132 and they are out of the Lou Platt conference a fine conference there check out Wahoo 30 minutes north of the capital city here in Lincoln they are also blue and gold and they average 195 and they are the Warriors and they have a tradition rich basketball program there upset by Fairbury last year they're back in the state championship this year looking for more Wahoo got there by starting out by beating Columbus Scotus and then handling O'Neill with ease yesterday. St. Paul, on the other hand, had a nice little battle going with Battle Creek at first. And then they beat Fairbury yesterday in a battle of a rematch of last year's C1 final to set up today's game with Wahoo. And John Bishop right by my side again. This game is going to go to a beat of a different drummer, you might say. It looks like power on power. Most definitely power on power. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were a professional wrestler. But anyway, should be an interesting matchup tonight because you've got a team who's won a championship against a team who knows how to win championships. Of course, Wahoo has made more news in the last couple of weeks because of something said by a man in New York, Mr. David Letterman. But Wahoo's name has been put on the map simply because of their great basketball skill. It all started with the Wahoo program and head coach Mick Anderson starting the kids out at a young age they won so many state titles in fact they started the run back in 83 took a couple of years off but then in 90 90 91 93 94 Wahoo state champions and had it not been for an upset by Ogallala they could have swept the entire decade of the 90s in class B and then they moved into class C1 and everyone thought my goodness They've just brought the kings of Class B, the team that should be moved to Class A for all intents and purposes, and they knocked them down a notch. Well, what happened? Last year, Wahoo got ousted by Fairbury in the first round, 60 to 59. So Wahoo kind of got their comeuppance a little bit. Now they're back in the state championship game, and as we know, when Wahoo plays on championship Saturday, anything is possible, and memories are sure to be made. Great crowd on hand here tonight at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. They needed about 7,100 7, fans to break the all-time attendance mark during the evening session. Had a good crowd for the first game of the night session that we just saw as Sterling defeats Pleasanton for the D1 title here. Again, the fans coming up from, uh, coming down from Wahoo, only 30 minutes away. They know the way to Lincoln. They know the way here because they've been here so many times, as had the other teams that have been here. We had some great games early in the day. Started out by Stanton in the Class C2 game in an overtime thriller over Lincoln Christian, 67 to 66. Then you had the Class D2 game. I'll tell you what, that one was a barn burner also. And you had Philly beating Shickley, 59-51. The Class A game was a close one until the end. Lincoln Northeast pulled out a 67-55 win over Columbus. And in the Class D1 game, just completed about 10 minutes ago, Sterling ran away from Pleasanton in the last three minutes of the game, 71 to 53. And that's it for the review of the day. We've got Wahoo and St. Paul. It's like feeding candy to a baby. It's all so pleasant. And we'll be back with more of this Class C1 championship game right after this. NC Plus Grain Sorghum Hybrids. 
get three to six years before they're released for good behavior. This extensive research under a wide variety of growing conditions is the only way we can be sure that the NC Plus sorghum you use will perform the way you need it to, with no surprises. Research makes NC Plus America's down-to-earth seed company. Maybe it was fate, or our sweet children. No way, Jose! Or that truck that almost hit me came this close. But for some reason, I pulled off, and there was a KFC. And they have this whole new menu. Oh, I was surprised. New Colonel's Crispy Strips and Chunky Chicken Pot Pie, made fresh all day. You got all this at KFC? If you haven't been to KFC lately, you don't know what you're missing. I may never have to cook again. Now get a Colonel's Crispy Strips or Chunky Chicken Pot Pie combo meal, just $3.99. Glad to have you along for the Class C1 Championship coming up in just a few minutes. St. Paul, the defending state champion, going up against Wahoo. And there you see the signs that St. Paul have. Take it all, St. Paul the SEG. I guess the SEG means going from one championship to the other. On the Wahoo side, their signs are very simple. Wahoo. Wahoo. That's all they need to say. And they also have the power of the jinx behind them because they're sitting on the south side of the Devaney Center, which has been the good luck side, 10 for 10 so far in the girls and boys state tournaments. As far as matchups are concerned, you see the St. Paul players still in their shoot around. This is a team that's going to focus its attack around the Wardeens, Brandon and Neal. Brandon averaging 18.3 points per game, nearly nine rebounds per contest. And Neal Wardeen, the junior, 13 points per game, seven and a half rebounds. And St. Paul went to Brandon Wardeen extensively yesterday against Fairbury, 34 points. All right. That's what we have down here, 34 points. I don't know if that's exactly correct or not, but Brandon with a big game, with big games throughout this tournament. And he will have to again cash in for St. Paul. On the other side of the ledger, the Wahoo Warriors, one man comes to mind, Mike Simons, taking on the great legacy of the Glocks, both Ryan and Jason. Mike averaging 25 and a half points a game. He scored over 20 points in both of the early contests here in the state tournament when they beat Columbus Scotus in a tough fought battle in overtime and then easily handled O'Neill yesterday. So Wahoo, obviously, they come in with the experience, but they also come in with the players that can handle the job. Should be an interesting battle tonight because you've got a Wahoo team, as we've mentioned, with so much tradition against St. Paul, a team that has won this championship before. I'll be fascinated to know how Wahoo reacts to playing in their first C1 championship game. I know there's not much difference when you once you get down to the nuts and bolts of a title game, but still, they're used to playing those Class B schools, and now they're going to come in and they're going to face a St. Paul team that's not going to be intimidated by anybody. No, St. Paul is simply a, a tough-tested team. They play good competition in their conference in the Lou Platt, and they play good competition here at State, especially with Fairbury yesterday and John Beerbomb and company. They gave everybody all they wanted, and St. Paul simply tightened its grip on this C1 uh, class. And it looks like maybe more today. Who knows? Wahoo and St. Paul, you can't ask for much more of an even matchup than that. Well, I'll tell you what, one team that's got to be very disappointed with the results of Class C1 this year is Grand Island Central Catholic. That is the one common opponent between these two schools. And Grand Island CC, much to their credit, defeated both of these schools. They beat St. Paul by three. They beat Wahoo by 11 earlier in the season. So Grand Island Central Catholic, a team that was ousted in the first round of the tournament. Unfortunately, they do not get their chance to face either of these teams. Instead, it's going to be St. Paul, the defending champions, against Wahoo, the perennial favorites in just about anywhere they play. Hey, you what? It's going to be a wonderful game here. We're just about ready to get started. I think folks are eagerly anticipating painted faces and everything. I think they're just a little bit fired up. I think they are, too. They've got a lot of fan support behind them. Of course, Wahoo taking the shorter route to get here as far as distance traveled by the fans. But believe me, they're going to be in here in force as well as the St. Paul Wildcat faithful. And now, without any further ado, we're ready for the lineups. Here's Rich Broderson.
George Boris should report to the announcer. George Boris should report to the announcer immediately. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Nebraska School Activities Association and its member schools, welcome to the Bob Devaney Sports Center for the NSAA 1996 Nebraska High School Boys Basketball State Tournament. Now for tonight's Class C-1 championship game between the 22 and 3 Wahoo Warriors and the 24 and 1 St. Paul Wildcats. Here are the lineups. First, the non-starters for Wahoo. Number 21, Greg Brigham. Number 25, Joel Deacon. Number 33, Jeff Kaiser. Number 41, Andy Dukalil. Number 43, Jaron Brom. Number 44, Dan Brown. And number 55, Tim Bohani. Now the non-starters for St. Paul. Number 12, Mike Sack. Number 14, Matt Kane. Number 21, Ryan Rittinger. Number 24, Brian Knapp. Number 25, Aaron Rasmussen. Number 30, Kelly Brooks. And number 32, Joe Sack. Now, here are the starters for the Warriors. A 6'2 senior, number 23, Eric Eady. A 6'3 senior, number 31, Mike Simon. A 5'10 senior, number 35, Josh Henderson. A 6'1 senior, number 53, Ryan Biella. And a 6'3 senior, number 54, Josh Herman. The assistant coaches are Darwin Lehman and Guy Dunning, and the head coach of the Warriors is Mark Watton. Now, here are the starters for the Wildcats. A 6'5 senior, double zero, Lauren Kaiser. A six foot sophomore, number 10, Matt Holmberg. A six four senior, number 33, Brendan Wardine. A six four junior, number 35, Chris Meyer. And a six five junior, number 42, Neil Wardine. The assistant coach is Brad Wells, and the head coach of the Wildcats is Rick Peters. The officials for tonight's game are Steve Farley and Jay Wolf. The pitch official is Greg Harden. The battle cry has been sounded in Class C-1. It's Wahoo's Warriors against St. Paul's Wildcats. And the man with a verbal tomahawk to carry it through the game. John Bishop. Thank you very much, Vince. One person to keep an eye for on St. Paul, Nebraska football recruit Lauren Kaiser. The big double zero, he's been recruited to play linebacker by head coach Tom Osborne. But yesterday, while shooting a jump shot at the top of the key, he came down wrong on his left ankle. He limped off the court at the end of the first half. He played most of the fourth period, but he was limping badly. Today in the shoot around, he didn't appear any ill effects from that sprained ankle. However, the coaching staff, Rick Peters and the gang at St. Paul say they're going to be keeping their eyes on Lauren because that ankle is still very tender. So we'll see what happens with that. 
he, believe it or not, is the point guard for this team at hey. six foot five and some 230 pounds. In other words, don't get in his way. Ball is in the air, the tip, and we're ready for action. The defending C1 champions against the perennial championship contender, Wahoo. St. Paul in their home white, Wahoo in their traveling yellow, gold, and it comes the other way with Wahoo. Ball stripped away by Anderson. Anderson with the steal for Wahoo. Long shot by Edie. No good. Rebound brought down by Brandon Wardeen for St. Paul. So one shot for Wahoo and out. St. Paul averages a little over 60 points a game. They will try to control the tempo. They only give up 41.6 points. They play good stringent defense. Wahoo's going to stick in a 1-3-1 matchup zone on the outside. And it's worked twice in a row. Ball knocked away. Ryan Fiala got a piece of it. Here comes Anderson. The feed underneath and spilling to the floor. Mike Simons. Ball knocked out of bounds, no foul called. It will belong to Wahoo on the inbound. Good looking break right there. Wahoo will push the ball up when they can. They average 77 points a game and only give up 55. So they do like to get the quickness of the game going. Joe Sack in the basketball game right off the top. Moving it around the circle. Fiala with the basketball. Here's Simons, drives the lane, knocked away temporarily by Kaiser into the hands of his teammate, Neil Wardeen, and then knocked back by Mike Simons, but he knocked it out of bounds. He wanted the call to go the other way. Tell you what, these teams are hyped up to begin this game right now. We don't have a score yet, but we already have a minute full of action right here as St. Paul tries to draw first blood in this game. Without question, the biggest point guard in the state of Nebraska. Six foot five, Lauren Kaiser. Palmberg, moving it around. Wardeen for three. Won't fall, rebound brought down by Edie of Wahoo. Into the hands of Josh Anderson. 6.38 to go, first period, still no score. Anderson's gonna drive after the hesitation. Knocked out of bounds, it still belongs to the Warriors. Two turnovers for St. Paul already. Neither one of them has hurt them so far. Anderson to trigger the inbounds. Throws it deep into Fiala. Simons on double team. Edie for three. Rebound, St. Paul, Joe Sack. In all five games so far, the team's not hesitant to shoot that three-pointer at the beginning of the, of the game. Now St. Paul will set it up offensively, trying to get it down low. Sack with the basketball, fade away. In and out, no good. Rebound to Simons. Here comes Wahoo pushing the ball up. They will do this every opportunity they get a chance. Anderson again penetrates. Shot is missed. Palmberg the rebound. We played two minutes, no score, but no, but no loss of action. Palmberg has the ball knocked out of his hands by Simon. It will belong to the Wildcats. Simon has been around the ball every single time, whether it's on a steal, rebound, or shooting the ball. He likes it right there. That is why he is their go-to man. Now, don't expect Lauren Kaiser to put up many shots. He only averages a couple of points a game. Three-point try, Wardeen, Neal. It's only a matter of time before the Wardeen heat up. That time, Neal got it on the baseline side to score the three. First bucket of the ball game here. Simon, the foul, and the bucket counts. Mike Simon simply darted to the defense that time, not to be denied. Started up near the top of the key, went left side, and got a seam right in there. There he goes, draws the contact, left hand, beautiful bank off the glass. The old-fashioned three-point try now for Mike Simons. Simons to tie. 5.34 to go first period. Six-foot-three senior averaging over 25 a game. He won't miss many of those. 3-3 three, three our score. Lauren Kaiser to bring it across for the Wildcats. Very methodical he is. And look at that rifle to pass underneath. Wide open was sacked momentarily. And then he was fouled. On that particular series, they simply spread that 1-3-1 defense so wide you had a seam right there in the middle. And the defensive person right there, Ryan Viala, caught out of position for the blocking foul. Inbounds to St. Paul. Nearly lost it. Palmberg with a nice job in front of the Wahoo bench. Inside to Sack. Sack with tough defense on him. Rebound, Wardeen. Looking what I found, but it counts just the same. 5-3, St. Paul. 
So the Wardeens have each scored once for the, the uh, Warriors. Now Wahoo with it on the offensive side. Josh Anderson. In and out. Rebound, St. Paul. Good boxing so, out that time. So far, the Wildcats have done just that. They have not allowed Wahoo second tries at the basket. Moving it around for three. That time, Neil Wardeen couldn't get it to fall, but nice hustle on the part of Brandon to keep it alive for the Wildcats. Now, Brandon for three. That is how you beat the zone right there. You whip the ball around very fast. You try not to let the ball touch the floor, especially on a 1-3-1. You have two men up top, two men down low, and you simply go for the open shot. Eight to three, Wildcats. Wahoo cut off their heels for a moment. Let's see if they recover. Josh Herman, Anderson, Edie for three. Yes. Well, there's a question, there's an answer. Well, let's see here. One, two. Oh, three three-pointers already. Maybe four. They have lost track already. We did have one three-point play committed. Inside to Wardeen. Blocked by the underneath of the rim. Rebound to Simons. Wahoo with a chance to tie. St. Paul is going to be in a man-to-man -man defense most of the day. Look for a weave of some sort coming off of screens for Wahoo to try to get someone cutting across the middle. Interior pass, off balance shot, somehow that almost fell. Herman, rebound to St. Paul's Brandon Wardeen. Lauren Kaiser not showing too much ill effect on the ankle, he's been running pretty well. Yeah, he's been running the floor very well, getting up and down, not lagging behind at all. Three pointer, yes! Well folks, we could have another three point bomb fest. Now we have a whistle and a foul away from the basketball against St. Paul. That one's on the big guy. Lauren Kaiser that time away from the ball. Looks like he was going down. I'll have to take the official's word for it because I didn't see it. Well, Lauren Kaiser is going to have to handle with it. 2.59 to go. First period, St. Paul by five. in search of answers. See us for the ones about cars. With the Big A Across America warranty program, we stand behind every part we sell. And with 1,500 locations across America, there's one near you. For the creation of your total living environment, experience the finished look. The finished look in Columbus offers you two spacious levels of shopping at its best. Discover the variety of home accessories like fine crystal, lamps, and accent furniture that come to life with distinctive styling. You'll also find quality Barca lounger chairs and beautiful floral arrangements. Plus, the finished look is the area's only authorized dealer of GR Monte figurines. For accessories you'd love to live with, visit the finished look in Columbus. For St. Paul, it's not so much that they hit the shot here, but it's the ball does not touch the floor once. That is how you beat the zone. That is why St. Paul sports a five-point lead over Wahoo with 2.59 to go in the opening quarter. Wahoo to inbound underneath their own basket. Anderson, to trigger it in, tried to look for Simons, kicks it out to Edie. Now to Simons for three. Off the front of the rim, Lauren Kaiser with a tough rebound. St. Paul with an 8-3 rebounding edge so far in this first quarter. That is decisive. And you can see there, Lauren Kaiser hop-stepping a little bit as Josh Anderson puts some pressure on him. Here's a feed underneath. Joe Sack has the bucket fall through, but I don't believe it's going to count. There is a foul on Wahoo. Yes, it was, and I'll tell you, that was key by good ball movement. Look at right here, hitting the seam, going to the hole, very strong. Body contact right there, two shots. For Joe Sack, the six foot three senior averaging a little over five a game and three rebounds, two free throws for Mr. Sack. Josh Herman whistled with his first personal. Head coach Mark Watton there in your picture for just a moment took over for the legendary Mick Anderson who built this program into what it is today. And a very fine program, especially now to get back here to the finals. They're still right in this game. It's early. 
And they're showing their medal right now. Down underneath, Edie, blocked, but he got a piece of the skin. Yeah, got a part of the body right there. Block looked okay, but it looked like he followed through on that block, and that'll usually cost you because it carries it right into the player. See? Right there, got him with the body. And that'll cost him two free throws for Eric Edie, a six foot two senior averaging over 14 points a game and almost four rebounds. Three fouls now on St. Paul. Four points for Edie. And I have a feeling Josh Anderson's gonna be putting pressure on Lauren Kaiser the rest of the half to make him run on that ankle, or at least move on it, because it looks like he was doing a little hop step the last time Anderson put some heat on him. Well, he's the, he's the point man in the 1-3-1 one, one zone. His job is to push the ball to one side or the other so the defense can react the other way. Lauren Kaiser misses the shot, foul underneath, goes against St. Paul. And Neil Wardeen has been whistled with his second. That is the fourth team foul on the Wildcats. Two on Wahoo. We have two minutes, 11 seconds left in the first. St. Paul with a four-point lead. Wahoo with a chance to cut it to one or two, depending on what they choose to do here. They can do it all. They've got all kinds of weapons in their arsenal. In the basketball game now, Jaron Brown. Anderson. Tried to penetrate, now back out to Simons. Simons to Edie. Back to Anderson, three. Yes. He nailed that one. From the shooter's roll, that's a good rotation on that ball. As Wahoo now pressuring full court. Looks like they're trying to throw a little trap on him. Simons going nice away by Simons. Took it right out of the hands of Wardeen. Tries to feed the man underneath. Loose ball on the floor, and Josh Anderson with the good hustle to keep it alive for the Warriors. Now Simons wants it right back between two defenders. He's in for a he walked. Took a few steps on his way into the hole. Not a bad drive that time, just a few too many steps. Gave kind of a grimace to the official as he walked away. Simons didn't like to call. 11 to 10 our score. St. Paul leads by a point. Three pointer. No good, rebound inside St. Paul. Chris Meyer. 10-4 rebounding advantage right now. St. Paul with that size, pounding those boards. Wahoo needs to come up with something to counterman that. Brom. Now back to Simons. Josh Anderson, baseline. No, rebound inside, but from behind. Brandon Wardeen got a piece of the body. And Wardeen did not like that call at all. He came over and I think he caught a little bit of the hand on the way over. Here's the drive by Anderson. Good looking drive. Two Wahoo players right there. And oh, he may have a point. He may have a very good point. I thought he stole it right out of the hands. Normally when you do something like that, you hear the ball. If you hear the ball, that means you got ball. If you hear anything else, it means you got hand or arm. First foul shot by Herman is missed. Josh Herman, a six foot three senior, averaging 10 points even a game. A second free throw here would make it 13-11, while he would trail only by two. But it won't fall. So it's St. Paul the other way. This time Kaiser doesn't get any pressure in the backcourt. Looks over to his head coach, Rick Peters, for some advice. A diamond and one right now, keeping Mordine in check over here in the corner. You can't see Brandon Mordine in the corner here, but they have the man strictly on him. Durham Brom guarding him very closely against that three-point shot as we wind down toward 20 seconds in the first quarter. You know, we could have taken a commercial break. Wouldn't have missed anything. Nearly missed a steal by Josh Anderson. That drew the ire of the Wahoo fans. They like that. 11 seconds left. For three, Kaiser. Too much spin on that basketball. Lost out of bounds off the knee. It belongs to Wahoo with five seconds left in the first quarter. That was telltale of how bad that ankle was really hurting him. He had no push up on that. So he's in a lot more pain than maybe what he's letting on. Anderson, three seconds left. Two seconds left. Loose ball on the floor. Final shot to St. Paul off the back of the glass. And we go to the second period. 
St. Paul 13, Wahoo 10, back with more of the C1 Championship after this. If we are to open new frontiers in science, we must learn basic principles. If we are to perfect new information technologies, we must master the old ones. If we are to harvest the oceans, we have to start here, in our public schools, where our kids are learning to analyze problems and solve them together, where they're learning about America's past and, above all, learning for America's future. Public education works. The Great Percent event just got greater because now you can get into Ford Escort with 4.8% financing or up to 1,000 cash back. Or choose the popular Ford Windstar and get that same great 4.8 financing or 1,000 cash back. It's an even greater value direct from Ford Credit to you during the Great Percent event. 4.8 financing for 48 months or up to 1,000 cash back on Ford Escort or Ford Windstar. But hurry, the Great Percent event ends soon. So get to your local Ford dealer now. When both teams wear blue and gold, you got to be careful which T-shirt you're reading. St. Paul fans in that shot. St. Paul by three as we start the second period of play. And Brom to inbound for the Warriors. St. Paul staying in that man-to-man -man defense, sinking back away from the ball. Around the horn they go. Anderson, Simons for three. Off the front of the rim, but the long rebound belongs to Brom. Tries to find a teammate underneath, and it's stolen by Brandon Wardeen. Palmberg. And here's Lauren Kaiser. Kaiser tries to rifle a pass in there, and it's deflected away. Josh Anderson comes away with it for the Warriors. Force that one in there against traffic. That's something you really don't want to do too often. Wide open for three off the rim. No good. Rebound again to, to, this time, to Joe Sack. One thing I've noticed, Wahoo is not getting second and third tries at the basket. It's one shot and out, so if they don't make it, they're in trouble. Well, this last time down, they got an offensive rebound, but then it was turned over right away. That's the only one I've seen so far in the game. St. Paul, baseline drive. Wardeen off the glass. Wardeen with the left hand that time, as a matter of fact. Beautiful shot. Tough to switch hands in midair, but he did a beautiful job of it. Brandon Wardeen has 10 points, 15 for St. Paul. They lead by five, Edie. Those threes are not falling for Wahoo. Warren Kaiser being pressured by Anderson, dips it off to Palmberg. Looking down low, sack deflected out of bounds by Wahoo's Simons. Extremely tough pass that time, going, trying to go across the lane under the bucket. If he had gotten that, that would have uh, really Chapped Mark Watton a little bit because his defense would not have been doing his job. Down low, sack. Won't fall. And now we have a whistle and a foul, and it's going to be called on St. Paul. Chris Meyer. Chris Meyer, his first personal foul, 16 foul against St. Paul. 16 foul on St. Paul, one more, and Wahoo shoots bonus for the rest of the half, 6.23 to go before halftime. Yeah, and Wahoo only has committed two fouls. They're playing an extremely aggressive yet very clean game, which is why they only have two fouls. Looking down low, Simons. Simons. That travel may have been forced. St. Paul will take it. And they're staying with that press right now, and then they'll fall back into that 1-3-1 one, one defense. Palmberg triple covered for a moment. Lauren Kaiser spin move gets out of trouble. Wardeen. Brandon, one hander, pushed on the way up. Foul will be committed by Jaron Brom. Jaron Brom in that he is the one man guarding Brandon Wardeen in that diamond and one defense that they go out of in that one three one zone. Wardeen beats him clearly right there. He tries to get a hand on him, but gets him across the arm as Wardeen goes to the free throw line for two. Wardeen is a 10-11 prep athlete of the week a few weeks ago. He's six foot four, he's a senior averaging 18.3 and almost nine rebounds a game. And that is the first successful foul shot by St. Paul. And into the game for the first time, or at least for the first time in the second period, I should say, Ryan Fiala. As Brom grabs some bench. 
Wardeen with a nice smooth stroke to the basket. 17 to 10, St. Paul. This pace of this game definitely favors St. Paul right now. Again, they like to be more deliberate, look for their men down low, open up Wardeen on the outside, whereas the Wahoo likes to really get up and down the court. They're having to settle for half court right now. But if, but if they can hit shots like that, they'll settle for it. Mike Simons with another tray. He's got six points. And now a foul committed by Ryan Ander or Josh Anderson, excuse me. Josh is none too pleased about that. No, he was not. That happened about 20 feet away, and it did look, kind of look like he cut off the corner there from Lauren Kaiser. St. Paul inbounds on their end. St. Paul with a four-point lead. We played two and a half minutes into the second period of the C1 championship game between St. Paul and Wahoo. Palmberg. Rebounding position was to Wahoo, but Palmberg somehow got down in there. He doesn't come away with it. Nice play by Josh Herman to somehow get it out of traffic. Now feeds Simons, and Lauren Kaiser commits the foul. And Lauren Kaiser hit the floor. We heard it. And Mike Simons may have been ducky more than he did shooting it, seeing a big guy like that come after him. Here's Josh Anderson. Look at the toss down low. Simons is underneath. Here's Kaiser with the body. I think the Richter scale mark was 4.5. <laughs> Lauren Kaiser will be rolling around the AstroTurf Memorial Stadium one day. Simons with his first foul shot. Six foot three senior, fine player, 25.5 points per game on now on his second free throw. Timeout on the floor. Five minutes, 10 seconds to go before halftime. St. Paul 17, Wahoo 15. It's simple. Power and energy are what families and communities statewide get from NMPP Energy. It's energy that allows you to turn on your lights, heat your home, and watch this basketball game. It's technology that brings you this high school basketball tournament and provides power throughout the state of Nebraska and the Midwest. It's NMPP Energy providing electricity, natural gas, and energy services to 130 communities in Nebraska and the Midwest. NMPP Energy, we're people you can count on. Ford Credit announces the Great Percent event, slashing interest rates to just 4.8% APR for 48 months, or choose $600 cash back on a purchase or $600 back on a red carpet lease. It's your choice on 10 1996 models, including Ford Taurus, Ford Contour, Ford Probe, Ford Windstar, Ford Escort, and more. But 4.8% financing or $600 cash back won't last forever. The Great Percent event at your Ford dealer now. Hurry, offer in soon. Well, I said in the opening that they start them young playing basketball in Wahoo, but I don't think I meant that young. But they sure do have them painted up awfully nicely. At least they, they cheer well. Yes, they do. And Wahoo's had a lot to cheer about over the years. 17-15, St. Paul. And as I noticed the ball coming into St. Paul, the student section's always standing during games. I always hated that in high school. When I go to a game, I want to sit down and watch. I'll rise to my feet when something exciting happens. Yeah. Never happens that way, though. Well, you know what? We can't really stand here because otherwise the students will tell us to sit down. Ain't that the truth? Palmberg for three, partially blocked by Edie. Edie sprinting down the floor. But Palmberg right there to cover him. Wahoo with the basketball had a chance to tie or lead. Josh Anderson calling out plays. Anderson. Strong move to the hole, but right there for the rebound, Herman. See what Josh Anderson is beating the St. Paul defense off the dribble almost every time. And what cat-like reflexes, awfully quick if he could convert on that. That sure would be nice for Wahoo. St. Paul with a player change. Neil Wardeen back in the basketball game. To inbound, Brandon Wardeen. Haven't heard from Brandon in a while. That box and one defense working very well for uh, Wahoo. Lauren Kaiser. Very deliberate, but sometimes he'll just wind up and fire a pass right at somebody. You gotta have some strong ribs and a good solid chest to handle some of these passes from Lauren Kaiser. If that doesn't work, get a bulletproof vest. John Elway's got nothing on this guy. Here's the three, air ball. 
And now over the back. As Joe Sack was trying to get that rebound, he fell over the back of Mike Simons, who did get the rebound. And it's a foul on St. Paul, and Wahoo will be shooting free throws. Good open shot that time. Just didn't look like he was quite set as it falls way short. And there's the foul. He came down, tried to brace himself, and simply came over the top. Looks like he felt kind of bad about it. Wahoo now in the bonus situation. Two more fouls, and they're the double bonus. Mike Simons. Four in a row from the 15-foot line, Simons. Ten points for Mike, 19-17. The Warriors are out in front. Palmberg. Lauren Kaiser standing out there by center court. This, this could be a standing game. You let her a standoff up top. Deliberately, St. Paul with the basketball. Drive inside, Brandon Wardeen. Shot is up, no good. Rebound, Wahoo. The yellow jerseys are all over that one. And the last four times down the court, it's St. Paul only getting one shot. Looks like Wahoo is tightening things up. Why it's a 19 17 lead for the Warriors. Anderson to Herman. To Simons. Edie for three. Nearly blocked. Kaiser came out and took a swat at it. That may have taken the shot just a bit offline. And Kaiser will now bring the basketball back the other way for St. Paul. You can see right here when he stops at center court like that, they want to slow this game down. They don't want Wahoo to start running on him. They want to frustrate him a little bit. That's right. They want to make sure the pace of that game stays decidedly in their favor. That's what got them here, and that's what they think will carry them to the championship. Palm Bird guarded by Anderson. Turnaround jump shot. Brandon Wardine. They ain't going to stop for long. Wardine simply too much of a prolific scorer and can do it from anywhere on the court, including right there in the middle. Running with a basketball, Wahoo. A lot quicker on offense. Fiala. Rebound was fought for and a foul committed. Josh Herman was going up for Wahoo. And I believe he's the one that's going to be whistled with the personal. And he was up over Joe Sack that time. Joe Sack gave kind of a long look there. He didn't quite see what happened right there. Coach. Rick Peters is going to talk things over a little bit. Two minutes and 16 seconds to go in the second period. It's St. Paul by three. Considering the University of Nebraska at Kearney, here's an opportunity to gain valuable work experience and an income as you attend UNK. Hi, I'm Jim Coble, graduate of UNK and district manager for the Buckle. As a student, you could work in one of our two Kearney stores or our corporate headquarters. With over 160 stores and growing, we're always looking for talented individuals to join our team. Fulfill your education and career goals. Enroll today at the University of Nebraska at Kearney, then apply with us at the Buckle. If you want a great car at a great value, you want Ford Taurus. Now with 4-8 financing for 48 months or 600 cash back. And great new features like a standard V6 that's tune-up free for 100,000 miles. An air filtration system, flip-fold console, and more interior room than last year. All with 4-8 financing or 600 cash back at a price that's thousands less than Cameron and Accord. So get a great car and a great value. Get Ford Taurus during the Great Percent event at your local Ford dealer. Welcome back. St. Paul in the white going to Brandon Wardeen. He can go anywhere on the court, including the post-up move. That is tied the game at 19 with 2.16 to go in the second quarter. St. Paul to inbound. And Simons diving for the ball. He was all over Palmberg. But it's knocked out by Simons, and so St. Paul will get it right back. And we're back where we started from. Wardeen to inbound. Wahoo with that tough press. Now St. Paul to bring it back the other way. Tie game at 19, whistle and a foul, and Palmberg has gone down to a knee. Josh Anderson with a tough foul. Second personal on Anderson. As you see, Palmberg turns around and gets nothing but a face full of Josh Anderson. 
Two minutes to go before halftime. Kaiser. Again, very deliberate St. Paul. They've tried to keep the scoring down. Nice delay there for a moment as Sack just kind of bent over and waited for the Wahoo players to jump, thereby drawing the foul. Eric Eady draws his first personal, 16 foul against the Warriors. It will be a, or excuse me, 17 foul Wahoo, a shooting situation for Joe Sack. Two shots. Sack's first point is on a free throw. And he draws two. 21-19, Wildcats by a pair. 148 to go before halftime. Anderson across. Defense chant coming from the far side. Anderson still with a basketball. Now to Edie. Top of the circle, rifles a pass underneath. Herman, baby hook. Herman with a nice turnaround. And again, Anderson all over Kaiser. Trying to get him to hop around on that tender ankle. Wardeen back to Kaiser. 118 to go in the second. 21-21. Cross-court pass. Neil Wardeen. Three-pointer falls short. Rebound fought for. Controlled by St. Paul. Sack. Sack with four points. St. Paul 23-21. We're under a minute to go in the first half. Edie, tough shot. Rebound nearly brought down by Wahoo. Somehow saved by Wahoo. Nicely done by Herman, who gets the feed underneath from Anderson. Neil Anderson with great passing, finding Herman wide open after Herman saved the ball. 23-23, 34 seconds to go. Don't be surprised if St. Paul holds for the last shot as Palmberg dribbles well towards center court. Now to the man who can stand and hold a basketball with the best of them, Warren Kaiser. Now Anderson comes up and says, come on, let's play ball. 16 seconds to go. Kaiser, 11 seconds, under 10. Eight seconds, Kaiser still with it. Six, five seconds. Is Kaiser gonna take the shot? Three seconds, gonna kick it out to Palmberg for three. And that's how the half will end. Got one shot at it. And St. Paul and Wahoo are tied at 23. But you can tell by the pace of this game that St. Paul is bound and determined to keep this as low scoring as possible and to keep Wahoo from running up and down the floor with the basketball, something that they've done very well with. Some of the leading scorers of note, Brandon Wardeen has 14 points. And Simons for Wahoo with 10 points to lead the Warriors. 23-23, our halftime score. Let's head down to Vince Erickson now with Rick Peters of St. Paul. Yes, we do. Rick, right now we're right back where we started from, tied. What's the second half strategy to break this game open? Well, we, we don't want to break it too wide open with Wahoo's speed, so we're going to play our type of ball game, whether the fans like it or not. We're going to slow it down. The reason we slowed it down quite a bit the first half was foul trouble. I couldn't afford any more fouls on the big boys, so uh, we'll keep it just our pace of ball game like it is right now, and if we keep it 23-23 second half, we've got a good chance of winning. All righty, Rick, thank you very much for joining us. Go join your team right now. We're in a dandy here in the Class C-1 championship game. Back with more halftime after this. A new discovery. A new technology. A new one-pass corn herbicide. Guardsman eliminates grasses. Guardsman eliminates broadleaf weeds. Guardsman, more active, more effective, more consistent than bullet or bicep or extra zine. See the difference a whole new molecule can make. Try Guardsman, the leader in premix performance. If you need the toughness of the best-selling truck in the world, then check out the Great Percent Event at your local Ford dealer. The choice is yours. Get a 96 Ford F-150 with 4-8 financing, 600 cash back, or lease for only $249 a month. Either way, you get an XLT with a driver's side airbag, power locks and windows, air conditioning, and more. It's 4-8 financing. It's 600 cash back. It's a lease for $249 a month. It's the Great Percent Event, and it's only at your local Ford dealer. 
The KOLN KGIN Nebraska High School All-State Team Award is sponsored by Lincoln Telephone. They're not dancing in the streets yet at halftime because it is halftime. St. Paul and Wahoo tied at 23. Let's take a look at the All-Staters for Class C1. The Class C1 team features Wahoo senior Mike Simons. Mike plays a guard and forward position, averaging nearly 25 points and over 10 rebounds a game. C.J. Kogel of Grand Island Central Catholic had an outstanding season, scoring 34 a game. C.J. is an outstanding three-point shooter and one of the hardest working players on the Crusaders team. Brandon Wardine of St. Paul is a six-foot-four guard, scoring over 19 a game and pulling down eight boards a game. He is also a straight-A student. Matt Johnson of Ashland Greenwood had an incredible season. The six-foot-eight senior pivot man scored 27 a game and pulled down 18 rebounds. Chad Mustard completes the Class C1 team from Columbus SCOTUS. Chad used his 6'7 build to dominate inside and score 22 points a game. Honorable mention goes to John Beerbohm of Fairbury, Dirk Bow of Madison, Justin Hirschman of Crofton, Jeremy Penny of Elkhorn Valley, and Brent Clausen of Kimball. And that's your boys, Class C1, 1011 All-State Team. It's been remarkable. It's been a long time since I've witnessed so many points scored in one quarter. <laughs> on this ball club is the key. Every player seems to sense what the others are going to do. The out is that these girls are well coached. Their defensive play tonight is... Here we go. She's got the shot away. There's only seconds left. Student athletes. Competitors in the classroom, on the field of play. Winners in the game of life. Halftime at the Class C-1 championship game. Wahoo and St. Paul all knotted up at 23. A wonderful game going on right now. And with me is Milford head coach Tony Muller. Coach, thank you so much for taking the time out to join us here. Your thoughts on the Class C-1 All-State team? Well, I think the All-State team is a very strong one this year. You have two excellent postmen on there, and Chad Mustard, who had a strong season for SCOTUS this year, and Matt Johnson, who's had two seasons in a row with excellent shooting and rebounding. And, of course, C.J. Colgall, he's just, just an outstanding offensive player, and I think he displayed the kind of shooter he is Thursday with his shooting at Pershing. And then, of course, the two players we have tonight playing for the championship, Mike Simons and Brandon Mordine. They're both excellent athletes, leaders on their teams, just very solid players, and I think they've come up big in this game so far tonight. Coach, let's talk about your team. You had a pretty good year, but you kind of had to exit a little bit early. What we look forward to from Milford next year? Yeah, we thought we had a good season, and we were disappointed with the way it finished. But we have four starters coming back next year, two sophomores and two juniors, and we're expecting a lot out of that nucleus. There's a lot of good young teams in our area and around the state, as you see from young players here. So we're expecting that experience to come through for us next year. All righty, Coach. Sounds like you have a good start. Good luck to you next year and from the years beyond. Thank you. You betcha. Okay, we're still at halftime. We'll check out the statistics from this game between Wahoo and St. Paul after we take this break. Benefits are what most people expect from their insurance coverage after they report a claim. But when you have multiple coverage with the Ally Group, you realize benefits immediately. By combining coverage of your home, auto, and life with Allied, benefits come to you in the form of substantial discounts, optional payment plans, and our exclusive premier service, which sets you apart as one very smart consumer. Start realizing the benefits of combined coverage by calling your Allied Group agent. Allied Group's premier coverage. Without it, all you have is insurance. The Great Percent event just got greater because now you can get into Ford Escort with 4.8% financing or up to 1,000 cash back. Or choose the popular Ford Windstar and get that same great 4.8 financing or 1,000 cash back. It's an even greater value direct from Ford Credit to you during the Great Percent event. 4.8 financing for 48 months or up to 1,000 cash back on Ford Escort or Ford Windstar. But hurry, the Great Percent event ends soon. So get to your local Ford dealer now. Shaken. 
not stirred. Nothing more intense than slamming a dude. These high school basketball statistics are brought to you by Allied Insurance Group. As you heard St. Paul coach Rick Peters tell Vince Erickson they're playing a deliberate slow paced game St. Paul is and that's why the score is down at only 23 23 and as you expect looking at the halftime statistics of a tie ball game really not much to say everything pretty much even down the line three point shooting three for nine for Wahoo three for six for St. Paul we're all knotted up at 23 here in the first half second half we're going to find out which team gets their style of play in first and whichever team does has a good chance of winning the C1 championship back after this. We're all in search of answers. See us for the ones about cars. With the Big A Across America Warranty Program, we stand behind every part we sell. And with 1,500 locations across America, there's one near you. If you need the toughness of the best-selling truck in the world, then check out the great Percent event at your local Ford dealer. The choice is yours. Get a 96 Ford F-150 with 4-8 financing, 600 cash back or lease for only $249 a month. Either way, you get an XLT with a driver's side airbag, power locks and windows, air conditioning, and more. It's 4-8 financing. It's 600 cash back. It's a lease for $249 a month. It's the great Percent event, and it's only at your local Ford dealer. hundred years these men and these horses trained for war now they do ballet spend an evening in Vienna with the world-famous Royal Lippis Honor Stallions on their world tour March 10th Pershing Auditorium John Bishop back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center winding down halftime activities in the C1 championship game with Wahoo and St. Paul all tied up at 23 I mentioned before the break the team that comes out in the second half who can implement its offensive strategy first has the best chance of winning this game. St. Paul, no question, going for the deliberate slow game. Wahoo wants to speed it up a bit. And with that said, let's head down now to head coach Mark Watton of Wahoo standing by with Vince Erickson. That we do, John. Mark, you got a 23 all tie. What's it going to take to break the deadlock here in the second half? Well, I think we need to continue to play great defense, you know, like we have. Uh, we're a little out of sync on offense. We need to get uh, some easier shots. We're taking a lot of quick, long three-point jump shots. We need to find ways to get people open on the baseline. All righty, Coach. We'll let you get back to it. Best of luck to you in the second half. Thank you. We'll find out who's in sync in the second half because it's coming right up when we return. Central Community College, we put the future in your hands. Complete the first two years of a bachelor's degree through academic transfer programs at our Columbus, Grand Island, and Hastings campuses. Affordable costs in small classes make Central Community College a great place to start. Things you need tomorrow will help you understand. We put the future in your Hi, Norman Chris at T-Shirt Engineers, where what's important is you, the customer. T-Shirt Engineers' quality, service, and delivery is second to none. Right, Norm? Our professionally trained artists can create a design especially for you. Right, Norm? Our printers, educated in all of the newest techniques, can print one or thousands. Right, Norm? For custom screen printing for your business, club, team, or special event, you need to see T-Shirt Engineers today. Right, Norm? It's simple. Power and energy are what families and communities statewide get from NMPP Energy. It's energy that allows you to turn on your lights, heat your home, and watch this basketball game. It's technology that brings you this high school basketball tournament and provides power throughout the state of Nebraska and the Midwest. It's NMPP Energy providing electricity, natural gas, and energy services to 130 communities in Nebraska and the Midwest. 
NMPP Energy, we're people you can count on. Great game, minor problem. We've got a 23-all tie. We're at the end of the first half, getting ready to start the second half. Who's going to unlock the lock? Well, the man with the key for the play-by-play -play is John Bishop. Thank you very much, Vince. Inbound to St. Paul. It will be Brandon Wardeen to trigger it in, and we are set to go. Second half of action, Class C1. One more game to follow, the Class B title between Omaha Ron Colley and Hastings. But first, we got some unfinished business here. Lauren Kaiser to Palm Bird. Looking, shooting, no score. Chris Meyer, loose ball, flies out of there, and St. Paul will keep it. Back in that 1-3-1, one, one, Wahoo, they're going to stay in that most of the game until they go in that box and one, which worked on Brandon Mordeen most of the second quarter. Kaiser looks down low under double coverage, and we have a whistle and a foul on Wahoo. Yeah, that time they're going to get Ryan Fiala for coming up underneath the play. You have to give a man room to come down. Still, they're, pre they're pressuring him down below on the defense, which is what they want to do. They just want to make sure there's no contact. First foul of the half, 7.24 to go. 23-23 tie. First possession of the game to St. Paul. Palmberg for three. No. Rebound inside, though, and Meyer comes through. Once again, the board work by St. Paul has been phenomenal all day, starting out the second half much like the way they started out the first. Wahoo moves from Panhandle to Missouri River. Three-point goal for Simon. And Mike Simons can shoot the ball all the way from the Panhandle to the Missouri River. 26-25, Warriors. Off-balance pass to Palmberg. Now looking inside, turnaround jump shot, Wardeen, no. Rebound fought for and knocked out of bounds by St. Paul. It will be Wahoo basketball with a one-point lead. Meyer and Neil Wardeen doing a masterful job on the board. They almost got that board despite having three people around them on that play. They're really crashing the boards quite well. The Wahoo's fortunate to come out with this ball and a chance to take a one-point lead if they hit a two. Anderson will bring it across. Josh Anderson was beating the defense off the dribble most of the time in the first half. He got stronger as the second quarter got along. I'm anxious to see if that uh, parlays into something here in the second half. Penetration, Herman, foul. And they're gonna count the basket. They're going to count the basket. They are. Well, I'd be interested to see where the contact was made on that play to see if that was. Here's the play. Wahoo driving. I think they may have given him a little continuation there. The angle the, the official had probably looked like he was in the act of shooting, so you have to give it to him. And Rick Peters for St. Paul will agree with you. He throws his hands in disgust on the side. Pressure now by Wahoo. They will go to this defense after made baskets. St. Paul to bring it across Wardy. Knocked away by Edie. Edie to trigger the break. Here comes Simon. Did you see the way he switched hands on that play? Went up at the right, in with the left, off the glass. That is good body control. That's why they now have a six-point lead. Bringing it across, wide open. Neil Wardine. Two guys go up. One guy falls down. Foul on Wahoo. And you can only call a foul on one guy, but boy, I'll tell you what, they made sure, they let him know, don't come in here with that. Here it is. There's one contact, there's two. As Neil Wardeen heads to the free throw line, he's a 6'5 junior, averaging 13 points a game and 7.5 rebounds, two shots. Wardeen, only three points on the night, averaging 13. That was the third personal on Josh Herman. Second team foul for Wahoo. Thirty-one twenty-six Warriors. Wahoo basketball in a five-point lead. Anderson on the far side, stolen away. Here comes Wardeen. He's got Simons trailing. Wisely, Simons pulled up and let Wardeen do his thing because he had no chance there. There was none, and I'll tell you what, there was no chance of anybody seeing him because his own players shielded him from seeing Wardeen come out from underneath that one. That's almost an excuse me turnover. 31-28, Warriors by three. Simons finds Herman, turnaround, tough shot, Wardeen comes away with it. 
Free throws in this game so far. Wahoo, five of eight. St. Paul, seven for 10. Tie with a three. 31-28. Wahoo. Palmberg. Meyer, turnaround. Wardeen, Neal. That's an extremely hard shot to defense because it's so quick going up, and you have to have a touch for that. You can tell he's practiced that an awful lot. 31-30. So St. Paul's rattled off the last four. But this pace definitely favors Wahoo because it has picked up quite a bit. Edie draws the foul on Wardeen. The time the called Wardeen said he had not had a set position. And here's the drive. Wardeen. That's awfully close. But the official very definitive on his call, as he should be, and the block is called. So to the foul line. Eric Eady, four points tonight, one for one for two shooting foul shots. Eady, 6'2", senior. Mark Watton up off the bench, telling his team to be prepared for the ball coming down, setting up the defense. Edie misses the second, 32-30. St. Paul can tie with a deuce. And they look inside for it. Meyer, no good. Rebound somehow fought for. Nice play underneath by Brandon Wardeen, falling away to get the rebound to keep it alive. And now a foul has been called, I believe, on Herman. Brandon Bourdain created that play. And Herman has drawn his fourth foul. He created this play. The ball goes off from Meyer. Look at Bourdain. Save the ball right there. Has the presence of mind to find his player. There's the contact on the follow through. And two shots coming up for Joe Sack. Sack with four points, two for four free throws. Seven for 11 free throws now for St. Paul. Five for eight for Wahoo. Wahoo basketball on a two-point lead, 4.27 to go, third period, C1 championship from the Bob Devaney Sports Center on this 86th Boys State Tournament Championship Saturday. Double covered now, Simons. Miss Anderson. Anderson. Anderson, pull up. Anderson against Meyer on a size-wise, there's no match because Meyer, or Meyer, Kaiser is so much bigger. Quickness, it's the other way around, and that time the quickness paid off for Wahoo. Interior pass, shot is missed, but the foul is drawn. Chris Meyer will go to the line. Foul will go on Dan Brown. They're getting to see a really a good clinic on how to play good post offense here by turning and not putting the ball on the floor. I have not seen either team do that. That's why they either hit the shots or on the free throw line like the 6'4 junior Meyer is now. Meyer with five points. Make that six. Wahoo 34, St. Paul 32, 3.57 to go, third quarter. He's the first in the family to go to college. It wasn't easy. There were struggles with algebra and chemistry. Just between you and me. Hey, Mo. But his teachers took extra time with him. Don't tell your father, okay? And you made sure he Love gave you. it his best. Oh, you got something for me. There's more hard work ahead, what's, what's but he's school? ready. Call me with it. Thanks to what he got out of public school <laughs> and what he got from you. Anyone have a dollar? Public education works. Come on, somebody's got a dollar. Grandma's value number one. A job well done is time well spent. Value number two. You can't put a price on quality. But you can get quality at a terrific price at Runza, like our 100% ground beef burgers, special Runza sandwiches, or hand-sliced onion rings and great french fries. Value number three. It's better to give than to receive. Thanks, Grandma. Runza, food just like Grandma used to make. 
The classic mismatch of size and quickness. Lauren Kaiser, big number zero, double zero with the size. Josh Anderson with the quickness and gets the hoop. The quickness pays off there. 34-32 Wahoo, 3.55 to go, third quarter. That play also set up by a good pick from Dan Brown. Kaiser had nowhere to go. Simons for three. Yes. How can you defense it any better? Man right there in his face, and he still nailed it. Five-point Wahoo lead. St. Paul, Kaiser. Wahoo fans wanted him to shoot it. Instead, it'll be sack. It won't fall. Wahoo basketball the other way. Whistle and a foul. Yeah, it will go against St. Paul. Contact made as he switched over to the left side. Good call by the officials. They've been on top of almost every call so far, not only in this game, but the whole tournament. Palmberg picks up his first foul. That's the third team foul against St. Paul. Four for Wahoo here in the second half. 3.23 to go in the third. And Chris Meyer will check out. So too will Palmberg. Looking inside and another foul called. And I believe Mike Sack might be called with this one. Mike just checked into the game. We'll wait for the official call on that. Yes, it will. Simons that time just simply darted down the lane with reckless abandon and it paid off for him as the position was not set for anybody. He goes to the free throw line. We've given you Simons numbers, but it's worth another look. 25.5 points a game for the 6'3 senior. And he's six for six at the foul line. 19 points tonight for the senior. He has six of the nine walkthrough free throws so far in this game. Does that tell you who's getting the ball? Yeah. Tells me who's most effective with it as well. Amen. Anderson neither nearly stole that one away. Trying to take advantage of Mike Sack, who just checked into this game. Now Wardeen to inbound. Lauren Kaiser. 39-32, biggest lead of the game for either team. Now, I don't know if the deliberate offense is going to work here when you're down by seven. If they can open it up on the inside and shoot it out for a three and get Wardeen open, it will help them get back. But that's not going to cut it. Not that, not right right there. Second time he's tried a three-point shot. Second time he's come well short. Again, the tender ankle may have had something to do with it. I'm beginning to wonder if Kaiser is a liability out on there on the floor. Nice feed from Edie. But the shot won't fall. Now it's Simons. He has such a feel for his shot right there. Three people around him manages to get the shot off. Not only got the shot off, but managed to almost hit the thing. Joe Sack picks up his third. Fifth team foul on the Wildcats. And now Lauren Kaiser will check out of this game. And back in is Palmberg, Matt Palmberg. Simons. Eight in a row. Chris Meyer back in. And Mike Sack checks out for the Wildcats. Eight point lead for the Warriors of Wahoo. Biggest lead of the game for either team. 237 left in the third. Now the streak ends. 20 points for Simons. 40 for Wahoo. They lead by eight. Palmberg. Looked inside and Josh Anderson just picked up a foul. Yeah, Josh tried to reach around that time, made contact with the arm as the, as the offense slipped inside of him there. His job as a point guard on that one through one defense is to slide inside as they take a break to talk about it. Wahoo 40, St. Paul 32. We have 2.25 to go. Now with Lauren Kaiser on the bench for St. Paul. Do the Wildcats speed it up just a little bit and see if they can't uh, make something happen offensively? Well, as Coach McPeter said, they really don't want to change up their game too much because that will get them out of their rhythm of their game. It is still an eight-point game. That is still a three-possession game. With the way they block out, the way they play defense, they only allow 41 points a game. They've already allowed that 40, but you're going against a prolific offensive team like that. I think they're going to stick with their game until it gets time to really not to. About three, four minutes to go in the game. 
That way they can be comfortable. They're not panicking. They're not letting Wahoo dictate the tempo with this game. When that happens, teams have a tendency of getting of falling behind and then really getting out of sync. And St. Paul is that really not in that position yet. So I'm not going to look for that until about oh, three, four minutes to go in the fourth quarter if that situation even arises. And Brandon Wardeen and Neal will have to heat things up a little bit. Brandon has been quiet here in the third period. He's yeah. got 16 points for the game. Neil Wardeen with six. These are the two leading scores for the Wildcats. Yeah, Brandon had that first shot there in the third quarter and has been quiet ever since. They've kind of gone to that uh, box and one defense from time to time, stifling him from getting open. Palm Berg for three. Yes! He needed that very badly. He had missed about three in a row. That'll get his confidence up, and just like that, it's a five-point game, two-possession game. Wahoo basketball, Neil Anderson. I keep saying Neil, it's Josh. Josh! Your mind really is in Chicago. <laughs> Not with the Cubbies, but at Soldier Field. <laughs> yeah, and he's retired. Yeah. My goodness. Josh Anderson now has seven points. 42-35, the lead is seven for the Wild, or for Wahoo. Another three tried, no good. This time, Neil Wardine falls short. And now Wahoo basketball, seven point lead. Try to make it 10, no. Rebound to St. Paul, and that's a big series of events for St. Paul. They could not afford to go down by 10. 90 seconds to go, third period. Palmberg, Neil Wardeen. Wardeen hacked on the way up by Edie. He did that time, tried to get ball, but evidently got part of the arm when he went up for that shot. Neil Wardeen will go to the free throw line for a couple as Wahoo meets there at the free throw circle. Mike Simons, what a game he has played so far. 21 points for Simons. And Neil Wardeen now steps to the free throw line. Six points on the night. One for two at the foul line. The 6'5 junior. In and out, no good. Rebound to Simons. 42-36. Warriors by six. They've led for the most part here in the second half. Anderson thought about it. Jump shot, short. Jaron Brom. Rebound to St. Paul. It looked like Meyer tipped that one back into the hands of his own man. Good heads up play there by Chris Meyer. Stolen out of the hands momentarily. Out of bounds on Eric Eady. Checking back into the basketball game, Ryan Fiala. Jaron Brom leaves. 48.2 seconds to go, third period. Palmberg thought about another three. Now to Back to Palmberg, top of the circle. Jump shot, hanger, no. Rebound inside, Neil Wardeen stripped of the basketball on the way up, but a foul called, or no, excuse me, yeah. out of bounds. He stepped on the end line. Thought we had a foul, but actually it was knocked out of the hands on Wahoo. 32 seconds left here in the third. You notice how St. Paul is forced to float those passes over the defense. That slows things down and makes the zone that much more effective. And that pass was partially deflected by Edie, but into the hands of Meyer. Now Palmberg for three. Can't get it. Rebound to Edie. 15 seconds left. Wahoo to play for one shot. 12 seconds left. Josh Anderson, nine seconds left. Seven seconds left. From three. In and out. Three seconds left. Rebound to St. Paul. The buzzer will sound. There will not be a last shot. And we will go to the fourth period of play in the C1 Championship. Wahoo 42, St. Paul 36. If you think all seed corn is handled the same, you've only scratched the surface. NC Plus harvests in the husk to protect seed corn during transportation. And rubber-coated machinery protects corn during processing. So not a single scratch can open your corn up to disease, pests, or germination problems. Quality, 
makes NC Plus America's down-to-earth seed company. Grandma's value number one. Honesty is the best policy. Value number two. You get what you pay for. Like the honest meal at an honest price you get at Runza. Bigger portions, higher quality, better value. Nobody gives you your money's worth like Runza. Grandma's value number three. Only the best will do. Live a little. Runza, food just like Grandma used to make. Wahoo trying for a seventh state championship. They won their first back in 1926. That's also the last time they won a Class C championship. The rest have come in Class B. They have eight minutes to win a C1 title. 42-36 Warriors. And Josh Anderson will touch the basketball first. Anderson giving this team superb senior leadership out there front. That's what you need to keep this team well-oiled and the machine they are leading by six. Simons, Anderson, round the circle, that's Fiala. Back to Simons. Now it's Wahoo playing a little bit more deliberate. So you can afford to do that with a six point lead. This is true. Simons, the move on Wardeen between two defenders. Oh! Oh, I'll a skip and a jump and a bucket. 23 for Mike, 44-36, powers the block and the shot will count. The shot will count and the foul. That time he simply went in there and said, hey, if I get it, great, if not, oh well. And that time he got it plus the contact. Beautiful play that time, a good chance taken that time by Joe Sack as he goes to the free throw line for an old fashioned three point play. Brown called with his second foul for Wahoo. Seventh team foul the rest of this game. St. Paul will shoot the bonus. But the foul shot is missed. Loose ball controlled by St. Paul. Brandon Mordeen coming up huge again. Lauren Kaiser back in the game to start the fourth period. Wardeen, Sack, Palmberg coming all the way across. Now Palmberg for three. Looked like that kind of slipped off his hand when he released it. Now the last two have been like that. They've gone over to the right side. He may need to wipe his hand off a little bit. So back the other co way come the Warriors. 44-38. Wahoo by six. Six minutes, 37 seconds to play in the regulation. And a whistle and a foul underneath as Simons tried to get down there between two Warrior, between two St. Paul defenders. Simon simply so fast on that drive that once he gets that steam up, it's like a runaway train. You can't stop it, and if you do, you're going to get called on a foul. That's simply his confidence in his drive like that. Palmberg will leave. And Mike Sack will check in. That's the fourth foul, by the way, on Neil Wardeen with six minutes, 34 seconds to go in the ball game. Wahoo leads by six. So, whose deal is it, anyway? It's Amigos' deal. The Amigos' deal every Saturday are the world's greatest nachos for only $2.39. I'll bet my nachos and call. Four aces. Those nachos are mine. Four aces? When it's Amigos' food, you always win. Just lucky, I guess. Amigos, where there's a special deal every day. Amigos! The great percent event just got greater because now you can get into Ford Escort with 4.8% financing or up to 1,000 cash back. Or choose the popular Ford Windstar and get that same great 4.8 financing or 1,000 cash back. It's an even greater value direct from Ford Credit to you during the great percent event. 4.8 financing for 48 months or up to 1,000 cash back on Ford Escort or Ford Windstar. But hurry, the great percent event ends soon. So get to your local Ford dealer now. That's something Wahoo fans are used to, raising that index finger. Right now, they're six minutes and 30 seconds away from doing it again, 44-38 Warriors. Fiala dribbles out of trouble. You know, I think I recognize some of those young ladies. I think they're Wahoo Newman cheerleaders. Really? Yeah. Shows you, hey, town sticks together. You gotta like that. I guess. 
Looking inside, and it's intercepted by Wardeen. Edie had nowhere to throw that one. Apparently didn't see Wardeen standing there. Sack for three. Talk about timely. Talk about timely. Three-point game right now, under six minutes to go. Let's get fired up. 44-41, Warriors by three. Edie with it on the left side. Fiala. Around the circle they go. Dan Brown touched it for a moment. Now it's Fiala driving the baseline, blocked in his tracks by Sack. Back to Brown, gives it off. Moving it around, 5.36 to go, 44-41, Warriors. Anderson to drive, kick it out for three. Edie, yes! Nail. Talk about nail. Well, moving that ball inside and out will finally open up a shot. Edie had plenty of room to shoot it. Sack thought again, thought about it from three. St. Paul trails by six. Lauren Kaiser. Sack again. This time well short, but his teammate right there for the rebound, but it won't fall. Wardeen, another chance. Hacked on the way up. And he can feel it. He just goes, Ugh, darn it. I had it. So close like that on the rebound and the regular shot. He was off balance below the basket when he put up that uh, little take out the trash shot. But just enough here, off the rebound. Look at Bourdine, right place, right time. Goes up off balance. Gets the ball to go back. Pump fake, back up, and now free throw. Rare miss for Brandon Wardine. That's his first miss tonight on foul shots. He's got 16 points, but he's been stuck on 16 points for quite some time. Still a six-point deficit for the Wildcats. Five minutes and one second left. Wardine with 17 points. He's just about up to his average, and I'll tell you what, he's a guy who's consistent, and he's been very much that today. Simon looks down low. Herman, Simon, long three! Like you didn't think a thing about it, like it was just natural. Wouldn't we all love to be that natural? 26 points for Mike Simons, 50 to 42 Warriors. Whipping it across the floor, sack wide open and he was fouled going to the basket. Edie made contact, that's his third. Both teams in the bonus for the final four minutes, 32 seconds. Wahoo fouls twice more, St. Paul in the double bonus. Six fouls on St. Paul, the next one, Wahoo will go to the bonus and three more for the double. Joe Sack has had a tough night at the foul line, he's two for seven. What a time to break out of the funk right now. Boy, do they need it. St. Paul now 10 of 18 from the free throw line. Six for 12 here in the second half. Fifty forty four Wahoo. Josh Anderson. Against Sack. Now it's Mike Simons. Edie. Looking for the open shot. Down low. Herman. Oh, he traveled. Steps. Called steps on the block there. Looked like there may have been some contact. Before that contact happened, there were steps. St. Paul with a chance to pull within either four or three, depending on their shot selection. Four minutes, eight seconds to go. Lauren Kaiser will walk it across. Sack. Looking inside, he was open for a minute, but the pass falls away into the hands of Jaron Brom. Okay, this is the point where in each one of the games when there was a breakaway, this is where it happened. Let's find out which team is going to do it. And it may be Wahoo, and who else but Mike Simons. 29 points. Wahoo by nine. And St. Paul will take a timeout. Rick Peters has seen it all. Three minutes, 37 seconds to go. The Warriors by nine. We're all in search of answers. See us for the ones about cars. 
With the Big A Across America warranty program, we stand behind every part we sell. And with 1,500 locations across America, there's one near you. Say yes to SCC. At Southeast Community College, we provide vocational, technical, and academic transfer programs for students wishing to excel in a job of their choice. Southeast Community College offers small classes and outstanding educational facilities, all at an affordable price. We provide a proud tradition of quality education at our three campuses in Beatrice, Lincoln, and Milford, plus continuing education programs in 23 communities in Southeast Nebraska. Say yes to SCC Southeast Community College. Feeling it, grooving on. Mike Simons is in the zone with the three. You can tell he feels it. And we're getting in the red zone of this game. John Bishop, 53, 44, Wahoo, 337 to go. Four three-pointers for Mike Simons and none bigger than the last two. It's opened this game up. Still a three-possession game, but St. Paul has not been shooting that many threes. Sack hits the side of the backboard. And now Wahoo can run a little clock. Edie Simons. Got to be careful when he's got the basketball and a reach in. Actually, no foul. Just or was it? Nope, no foul. Just knocked out of bounds by Brandon Wardeen. If you're wondering about foul problems, Neil Wardeen has four. Josh Herman has four. Wahoo basketball, three minutes to go. Simons nearly lost, lost his balance. Gets it off to Anderson. Whip pass underneath. Herman hits the side. What a huge defensive play that time. Absolutely gigantic by Joe Sack. Sack came up with a beautiful block down there to force that. Got the rebound and got someone to go over his back. And now he'll shoot a couple of free throws. Jaron Brom picks up his second personal. Look at the whip pass here inside. Playing a defense, getting it, blocking it. Rebound, foul. And now a timeout taken by head coach Mark Watton of the Warriors. Wahoo leads by nine. We have 2.53 to go. But quite frankly, St. Paul. St. <laughs> Paul has not shown the ability to really come back. You know, they say the vice president is almost a worthless position. I think I could fill that. Well, you know. Right now, uh, Bob Dole needs a running mate. You interested? Uh, well, seeing as how Bob Dole's from Kansas, I live in Nebraska right north. Sounds like a good fit. Yeah, but are you old enough to hold the office? Uh, all depends on what kind of age group you're talking about. Well, you have to be 35 to be president. I think it's the same for well, Vice President. I've, I've got a couple of years to wait, but then again, <laughs> maybe I can get a fake ID. We're trying to trap him to give us his age. <laughs> 53-44 Warriors. St. Paul will shoot foul shots. These are very big foul shots coming up for Joe Sack. He's had a tough night, though. Four for nine. Eight points for Joe. They really need these here. He's hit his last three. Sack in double figures with 10 points. He's made his last four free throws. 53-46, Warriors by seven. Anderson fouled on the steal attempt by Palmer. Tough call. Matt really wanted that steal. And he really went after it, but he drew some arm on that play. Josh Anderson, the fine senior guard, five foot 10, goes to the free throw line. One and one now. Only the seventh foul on St. Paul, so it's one and one for three more. Anderson now with eight points. That's his first free throw attempt. Free throws will be key down the stretch. The guy you don't want at the line if you're a St. Paul fan is Mike Simons. The 
with Josh Anderson also making a bid for that role. You just don't want the ball in Mike Simon's hands if you're St. Paul. He simply buried them with threes and free throws all game long. 55-46, three-pointer, Palmberg, no. Long rebound, Wahoo! Nice save by Edie into the hands of Jaron Brom. 2.30 to go. Warriors with a chance to go to the double-digit lead. Critical time now. They really need to press out right now. And they are coming out and intensifying their efforts. And I believe Brandon Wardeen is only a second foul. And then Josh Herman picking up the loose basketball right in front of us and whipping it across the floor to the official. Big smile Nearly his took face. his coach's head off. And here's the guy you don't want at the line. This would be his 30th point. Done. Nine for 10 at the foul line. 10 point Wahoo lead. How many coaches would love to see their player with that kind of stats from the free throw line? A lot. Every one. <laughs> Final two minutes of the ball game. Loose ball on the floor, tie up. Possession arrow to St. Paul. But again, Wahoo playing more intense defense than their counterparts from St. Paul. Now a little moisture on the court. They're gonna get a towel and wipe it off here. Two minutes, 13 seconds to go. Wahoo by 11. Biggest lead of the game for the Warriors. This game was tied at the half in a game that was controlled pace-wise by St. Paul. But slowly but surely, Wahoo has taken over command of the pace of this game, thereby the 11-point lead. In the final 213, four words, points from Brandon Wardeen. And there's a shot, but he can't get it to fall. Simons, and fouled by Lauren Kaiser as he was trying to wrestle for the basketball. Kaiser picks up his third. If they hit these two shots, I don't like to say it's over, but with five seconds away from the Mendoza line, five possessions is an awful lot, especially with a team like Wahoo. And especially in a situation where you're gonna have to start fouling, and the next foul will mean double bonuses the rest of the way for the Warriors. Simons. Two oh five, fifty eight, forty six. Wahoo can open up a thirteen point lead, and again, that's five possessions. Simons on the line. Kid just doesn't know how to miss. Fifty nine, forty six. Neil Wardeen standing on the line, well short. Under two minutes to go. And Wahoo may be cruising to a C1 championship. Anderson dribbles out of traffic. A minute 44 to go. Knocked away into the hands of Wardeen. St. Paul hasn't given up the ship yet. Kaiser. Sack for three. An unusual place for that to come, but it counts just the same. Now a foul is called as Simons tries to dribble out of trouble. That just looked like a simple reach. I don't know if he connected on that one or not. Third personal on Wardeen. Minute 22 to go, 10 point lead for the Warriors. The St. Paul bench, not much life. St. Paul crowd pretty quiet too. That kind of thing will quiet you right there when Mike Simons keeps racking up points on free throws. I'm gonna run out of room on my score sheet. <laughs> Joe Sack back in, Lauren Kaiser will leave perhaps for the final time as a St. Paul Wildcat. Oh, a miss. What is a miss? Wow, 60 to 49. A minute 17 to go. Sack guarded inside. Outside to Wardeen. Three. No. Rebound to Wahoo. Knocked out of bounds. It will belong to the Wild or to the Warriors. To the Warriors with a minute five to go. Time is running out. 
and Mark Watton might celebrate a state title. Long pass. Herman. St. Paul fans wanted the over and back there. Now you got to have three points over that line in order to get the over and back. There was only one point over, and that was the uh, the right foot. Palmberg commits the foul with 53 seconds to go. And with these foul shots, I have a feeling this game could be over. It will be, because five possessions in less than a minute is... Uh, the they're asking for a miracle from up above. Yeah. Edie to the line. He's two for four, eight points tonight. Now we may begin to see some of those Wahoo players who have yet to play in this game. Edie fails on the second attempt, 61-49, 50 seconds to go. Palmberg for three, yes. Mike Sack, his second one. Nine point game, 38 seconds left. They need to foul. Now the numbers on the other side. Anderson kicks it back out. They're wasting precious time. And they fouled the only man they could, Mike Simons. But Wahoo was allowed to waste a lot of time off that clock. Ran a good 20 seconds right there. They had a chance to go for a bucket, but they simply know the clock is their friend right now. And really so is Mike Simons on the free throw line. Simons, 34 points. Ooh, another miss. Second in a row, there's a rarity. Trying to save you space on your sheet there. By the way, the record for points in a state game at the state tournament in Class C1 is 39, a second miss. And a jump ball. Mike Simon, wow. Mike Simons said, fine, you want me to miss the second foul shot? I'll just get the ball back for us. That just about is the icing on the cake. Long inbounds play. Wahoo basketball trying to run the clock. 24 seconds left. Wahoo will win another state title, their seventh, against one loss in state title performances. Mike Simons will fall short of the record for points by a C1 player in the state tournament but he'll take the state title just the same. Anderson now breaks into double figures. <laughs> 20 seconds left, 11 point lead. Three pointer, in and out. 14 seconds left. A foul will be called, and that will do it. Josh Herman will go to the line, 12 seconds left, and the Wahoo fans behind us celebrate again. And once again on the south side, the streak continues. And now mass substitutions will check in, players shaking hands. Great display of sportsmanship as we expect in Nebraska State High School basketball. A lot of fresh faces in there will try to get their names mentioned. The St. Paul players lead to a standing ovation on the far side. And Wahoo celebrates. To the foul line, Josh Herman. It's been a great run for St. Paul. All the way back to the state finals this year. Brandon Mordine hugging his coach and his players. Hold your heads up high, guys. You gave a gallant effort. Herman still trying to make his first foul shot. Remember, the Class B game to follow. Up, oh, stepped on the line, so he's still going to have to wait for his first. So not all is perfect, but darn close enough. Yeah, he gets to take a cut down, take a shot at cutting down the net. I think that's all he can, ask, all he's going to ask for. Final 11 seconds. Well, count it off. And 
an almost insult added to injury. The Warriors are on top of the basketball world one more time. Wahoo, Class C1 champions, 63-52, back with medal presentations and interviews right after this. NC Plus Grain Sorghum Hybrids get three to six years before they're released for good behavior. This extensive research under a wide variety of growing conditions is the only way we can be sure that the NC Plus sorghum you use will perform the way you need it to, with no surprises. Research makes NC Plus America's down-to-earth seed company. Presentations to come as Wahoo wins the state title 63 to 52. And now let's head down to Rich Broderson. Brian Knapp. Number 25, Aaron Rasmussen. Number 30, Kelly Brooks. Number 32, Joe Sack. Double zero, Lauren Kaiser. Number 10, Matt Homburg. Number 33, Brendan Wardeen. Number 35, Chris Meyer. And number 42, Neil Wardeen. <laughs> All of you are welcome to receive the runner-up trophy for your school. Congratulations, St. Paul High School, Class C1 State Runners-Up. To the champions, first coach Mark Watton, we have a special award for you. Now, coach, hand out the gold medals to your championship team members. We'll introduce them one by one. Number 21, Greg Brigham. Number 25, Joel Deacon. Number 
Number 33, Jeff Kaiser. Number 41, Andy Ducalo. Number 43, Jaron Brom. Number 44, Dan Brown. There you go, Danny Brown. Great job, buddy. Number 55, Tim Bohati. Good job, Bo. We're to hang in there all year. Number 23, oh. Eric Eady. Good job, buddy. Hell of a year. Number 31, Mike Simon. I mean that. Number 35, Josh Anderson. Number 53, Ryan Viella. And number 54, Josh Herman. The 1996 Nebraska Class C1 High School basketball champion is Wahoon High School. Congratulations, players and coaches. You know, the players might be excited, but head coach Mark Watton might be the most excited of them, of them all. Wahoo 63. St. Paul 52 C1 championship returns to Saunders County and we'll be back with head coach Rick Peters of St. Paul in just a moment. Ever since we introduced Premier Service here at the Ally Group, we've received lots of inquiries asking how to receive a Premier Service card. Well, there's just one way, Premier Allied Insurance Agents. Besides the finest training and technical support, we provide our agents with the capability to give you Premier Service 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. There are even more benefits that come with our car, but you'll have to ask your Allied agent. Insurance for your car, home, business, and life with Premier Service available only from your Allied agent. Without this, all you have is insurance. So, whose deal is it anyway? It's Amigo's deal. The Amigo's deal every Saturday are the world's greatest nachos for only $2.39. I'll bet my nachos and call. Four aces. Those nachos are mine. Four aces? When it's Amigos food, you always win. Just lucky, I guess. Amigos, where there's a special deal every day. Amigos! A new discovery. A new technology. A new one-pass corn herbicide. Guardsman eliminates grasses. Guardsman eliminates broadleaf weeds. Guardsman, more active, more effective, more consistent than bullet or bicep or extra zine. See the difference a whole new molecule can make. Try Guardsman, the leader in premix performance. These high school basketball statistics are brought to you by Allied Insurance Group. John Bishop back at the Bob Devaney Sports Center. 63-52, to 52, Wahoo defeats St. Paul here with head coach Rick Peters of St. Paul. And coach, big game for Mike Simons. He was hard to stop. It was, it was tough tonight. Uh, I've watched him play lately here down at the tournament and, and some during the year, and uh, he really stepped it up tonight. I can't say enough about his play. Uh, we had Brandon, our best defensive player, on him, but they set a lot of screens. We didn't do a good job of jumping off the off the screens on him. So you got to give credit to Simons and the Wahoo team. They executed well, and they hit some key shots. Speaking of Brandon Wardine, he had a tough game in the second half. I believe I've got him unofficially. He was only held to about four points in the second half. He was really taken out of the game offensively. Yeah, he really was, and we don't have great speed on the floor. Uh, you know, we're just with our size. Uh, it's a little harder for us to run around and set screens and get Brandon open like uh, some quicker teams can do. So 
Uh, he struggled a little bit, and we needed some shots to fall from some other people, and they just didn't go tonight. Coach Peters, I know you won a state title last year. This year it wasn't to be, but who knows, maybe next year again. I tell you what, there's a lot of people who like me standing right where I am now. Even It's hard to lose, but this group of kids fought, fought their uh, hearts out all season long, and I'm so pleased for them. And uh, second isn't all that bad. You'd like to win, but they, they've done a good job. 24-2 and two is a good season. Coach Peters, thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you. All right. St. Paul losing this year by 11. They won last year. Let's take a look at the final stats. And the field goal percentage well down for St. Paul, only 32% from the field. Rebound advantage goes to St. Paul. Turnover is very low for a game of this caliber. And also, three-point shooting a key, eight for 17 for Wahoo. And the big player of the game, Mike Simons, 34 points. He had at least four three-pointers in the ball game. An excellent basketball game for Mike Simons. A great way to go out as a state champion. And speaking of state champions, we're gonna have interviews with the state championship coaches and players in just a moment. The 1996 Boys State Basketball Finals are brought to you by NC Plus, America's down-to-earth seed company. Your local Ford dealer. Big A Auto Parts, America's parts pros. And Lincoln Telephone. Grandma's value number one. A job well done is time well spent. Value number two. You can't put a price on quality. But you can get quality at a terrific price at Runza, like our 100% ground beef burgers, special Runza sandwiches, or hand-sliced onion rings and great french fries. Value number three. It's better to give than to receive. Thanks, Grandma. Runza, food just like Grandma used to make. You're watching KOLN Lincoln and KGIN Grand Island. A big Wahoo for the Wahoo Warriors. 11 point winners over St. Paul in the Class C1 championship game. And with me now is a very happy coach, the happiest man at the Devaney Center right now, Coach Mark Watton of Wahoo. And Coach, we heard you make comments out there to your players. What's it feel like to be the state champions leading such a great group of seniors here? Uh, just uh, feels tremendous. Uh, it's hard to hard to put into words, I guess. Uh, we struggled early in the season, and I'm I'm sure there was people out there uh, doubting us a little bit and, and wondering what happened to Wahoo. But uh, the effort and uh, the so forth that the kids put in just uh, you can't say enough about it. That they're the ones that 99.9% uh, .9 of it goes to them because they had to do the plan on the court so it looked like there in midway through the fourth quarter is when you made that charge did you give them any special instructions at all or just to keep with the game plan oh at halftime you know i just told them that uh probably my uh bonehead move the first half of not going to a different defense early brandon wardine hit those three i believe it was three three pointers so quick uh that boom that got him off to that lead after we changed defenses we got back, we went in at halftime even, and I just said the second half, if we continue to play that kind of defense and improve our shot selection a little bit, we're gonna be fine. And once we got up six or eight, kids showed the confidence like you can't believe. Well, Coach, My, it's a wonderful game for you. Congratulations, go out and enjoy the state championship, will you? Oh, uh, we're going to. We can't wait to get back to Wahoo. All righty, congratulations thank you, thank again. You. We have only half the story here. The players are next after we take a short break. Okay, boy, now just like I taught you, I want you to open the cooler, and I want you to get me an ice-cold Pepsi. Come on, boy, you can do it. Good boy, good boy. Maybe later we'll play Frisbee. Hey, big boy, you got another one of those for me? Oh. You are I love this dream. These are groceries. So is this. You can find this where you find these. The next time you go shopping, you can give this to the cashier. It's only a dollar, and every cent is used to buy needed items for the Lincoln Food Bank. You'll be helping families meet special needs and contributing to the statewide network of charity. So the next time you get these, use this for this so that others can get these. 
The winter season in Nebraska is much more complex than in just about any other part of the country. That makes my job more challenging and more important. Especially in the morning, families like to know what the weather's going to be like before they bundle up and go outside. That's really important. The main thing is providing an accurate forecast so people know what to expect. The 1011 Weather Team, accurate and experienced forecasters who have you covered when it comes to Nebraska weather. When you need a reliable forecast, trust the 1011 Weather Team. Back here in the winner's circle after the Class C1 Championship. Wahoo, your winner over St. Paul, the 1995 champion. And now with me are the players, the guys that really got it done. Senior Josh Herman joins me. And Josh, after the start you guys got this year and the way you finished, it has to be that much more satisfying to have that medal around your neck. Yeah, because we knew that we could get it done the whole season. We just struggled at the beginning of the season because a lot of us, we got bigger in the offseason in the weight room, so our ability changed. And, that just, and then we just had to get, we had to get going. And what then you, we finally got going towards the end of the season and it really showed. What do you have to say for your fellow seniors out there? You guys really stuck together so well. Well, we came down last year, didn't quite get it done. We got it done this year and we're a chance now. I understand you want to say hi to some folks. Yeah, I'd like to say hi to my grandpa in the hospital. Grandpa, this one was for you. All righty, congratulations, Thanks. Josh. Go enjoy that. The man of the hour, Mike Simons, 34 points, 13 of 17 from the free throw line. Mike, how does it feel to be a gamer? Uh, it feels really good since we just got beat last year by Fairbury in the opening round and made it all the better just to go out a winner this year as a senior. As I asked Josh there, you guys slow to start this year, fast to finish. Do you just feel you played your best basketball here in the tournament? Yeah, we started playing our best basketball around district time, and ever since then it just seems like everything just started clicking for us. You know, most folks would describe how you were shooting as being in the zone. Is that what it really felt like out there, or was it just day at the office? Oh, um, it wasn't really anything I, I did is just the key thing at the moment and I just went with what was going on so all right congratulations yeah. Mike go ahead and enjoy that your Hi, state championship you. there you go hello to everybody we've got Eric Eady with us right now Eric you had a big game out there especially with some big threes on the outside what was it like out there for you um I don't know it was, it was pretty nerve-wracking at the beginning but then once we got in, in a groove and in sync and everything everything just came together so I was pretty relaxed about two minutes into the game but the your, first two minutes were your thoughts for your fellow seniors out there um, I just like to tell them I love playing with them. I love all of them. Um, I don't know. We just worked really hard. And I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I got the opportunity to play with all of them. All righty. Congratulations. We'll let you go enjoy this. And we have one more senior with us, Josh Anderson. I don't want to really call him the quarterback, but the point guard of this team. Josh, your thoughts on this game and winning the state championship? Oh, it's a great feeling just knowing it's, it's your senior year. You and all the guys can get together and pull this through, especially when we started off three and three. Um, we had a team meetings, you know, and got all our differences aside. And since then, we've just playing, been playing great basketball. They played great basketball. That's why they're the champions. And they're going to come in right here and give us a victory. Yeah! The Wahoo Warriors, the Class C1 state champions, white vocal. And we'll be back right after this. Seward Spring Show, Saturday and Sunday at the Seward Ag Pavilion. Free food for the first 400 on Saturday. There's a basketball shootout, zoo weekend raffle, and many seminars for everyone. Ronald McDonald and Jello the Clown will be there for the kids. Seward Spring Show, Saturday and Sunday. Don't miss it. He's naturally charming. That's it. Like that. She's always polite. I do believe your fly's open. Together, they're outrageous. Always talking from the heart. So it's a good marriage. It's a solid and happy marriage. What did you hear? Differently? <laughs> Unafraid to take a stand. You never know what will happen when it's live. I did it! With Regis and Kathy Lee. Live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Weekdays at 9 on 1011. Reflection of Perfection. The official Husker Vision Fiesta Bowl video is now available at retail and video stores across the state. Or call 1 800 243 8515. We bought the wrong food in the I believed in spring training not only because I know that that's what has worked for me. Once I got it, I wanted to be able to help other people to get it. Get up tomorrow morning and do it again! Weekdays at 3 on 1011. 
as the Wahoo Warriors will attest, being a champion on the court is a lot of fun, but being a champion in the classroom can take you a lot further. Here's a scholar athlete. The stories of high school athletes who create success in the classroom and in the sporting arena are inspirational to all. This scholar athlete salute is brought to you by the Nebraska State Education Association. Presenting Ryan Nelson of Beatrice High School. Ryan is a senior who's been active in football and track, placing sixth in the long jump at the 1995 Nebraska State Track and Field Meet, helping Beatrice claim their third consecutive state championship. Ryan shares a first place rank in his class with an overall GPA of 4.0 and is a member of the National Honor Society. If we are to open new frontiers in science, we must learn basic principles. If we are to perfect new information technologies, we must master the old ones. If we are to harvest the oceans, we have to start here, in our public schools, where our kids are learning to analyze problems and solve them together, where they're learning about America's past and, above all, learning for America's future. Public education works. We're on the home stretch of the night session here, the Class B championship game between Hastings and Omaha Ron Colley on deck. But right now with us is the executive director of the NSAA, Jim Riley. Jim, thank you so much for taking the time out of your very busy schedule tonight to join us here. Your thoughts on the attendance here? It's been a great day overall, both day and night sessions. Yes, it has. Uh, we came in tonight needing about 7,000 to break the record. I think we probably reached it. I don't know, but... Uh, uh, it looks